All right. A couple minutes late. Sorry, guys. Let me get this going. Oh, oh. All right. I think I have everything going. Debbie Green's on. Thanks for sharing, Debbie. Appreciate it. I have a fun card tonight, you guys. A pop-up card or pop out card, maybe you want to call it pop up, pop out. It's gonna do all kinds of things except for throw confetti at you and blow horns, but um I'm going to use the rustic crate again. It's gonna work best for what um, my idea was in my head that I wanted to bring out. And um, that's about it. It's, it's pretty simple. You're gonna love it. I know you're gonna wanna make it. If you do, be sure and post it on my Green Thumb Stampers Creativity in Bloom page. It's open to the public for you guys to post whatever it is you're working on. It doesn't even matter if it's stamping up cards. You can post whatever. Love to see when Teresa posts um, her artwork and things like that. So tonight I've got a couple things to share uh, for any demonstrator who is going to attend the on stage at home event on Saturday. Um, you should have gotten the email from Stampin' Up and it would um, have some information. And then it was like plus, what does it say in the description? Plus um, event information or something. I, I, I can't remember what the line said, but in there, your um, personalized link to the event was in the email. Well, a lot of them are not correct. So open your email and be sure to look and click on your link. And make sure it takes you to the 2023 on stage at home event. Mine took me to the backstage event page from August. And I did hear, um, I saw on the leader page, a couple people said that I think it's the right page that you should get to the new mini catalog and the um pre-order exclusive stuff for the pre-order is what it sounded like but um just double check that i don't want you to be disappointed when the event starts and you can't get on so um i had that and because a lot of you that watch me are demos i wanted to remind you that the online the customer order for the new mini catalog customer selector, the customer mailing selector. Ugh. Customer mailing se selector is available for you to go in and choose the customers that you want to mail a mini catalog to. So that's open through the end of the month. So don't miss out on that either. Um, but that's it for updates for me. I do have a new host code. You will see when I turn my camera down and let's get started. We don't want to hear Jill ramble. Oh, we got Patty's on, Dawn's on. Now that I'm looking down at my computer, Christy's on. Yay, look at all you girls getting on. All right, I'm going to move my computer. Oh, I got to... I have to... That's something I want to do. I want to spotlight my desktop. Because I'm running in a million directions. My brain can't keep up with everything I'm trying to accomplish. And... Um, there's a lot I'm trying to accomplish. All right, I think my, hopefully my lights look all right. Clear that off, I was doing some filming. Let's clear that off and let me show you the card we're gonna make. This is the card we're gonna make. There's the front and there's the inside. So let's get started. I think you will be Glad to know I have all my supplies. I may eat those words, but I tried to have all my supplies handy. So I got them over here. Hope everyone's having a good week so far. Um, what's today's Wednesday? I 
did my craft show yesterday with Reed's work and it was a lot of fun. Small amount of people, but it was the best show that I've ever had. So I was excited. I'll take it. All right, so we're gonna get started. I'm gonna focus instead of trying to uh, ramble with you and um, make a card. I can uh, stack a lot going on. Multitask, have a lot of boxes open, but I'm bound to make some mess up. So we're gonna have a base of eight and a half by five and a half. Our inside is going to be eight and a quarter or five and a quarter by eight. All right. Then our outside piece will be just a standard crumb cake at four by five and a quarter. So I'm just going to start here. We've got our pretty peacock at eight and a half by five and a half. You know what? I'm going to score it today because I really want a nice crease there. So we're going to put it at four and a quarter. Our light gray blade is going to score it. Crease that fold well. All right. So now I'm going to get my little cheat sheet out. I wrote myself some notes on a piece of paper just so I could make sure I was telling you the right directions. So now this is five and a quarter by eight. I'm assuming the gal that I, uh, Teresa's Treasures stamps, bought Teresa's, Teresa's Treasures anyway. Um, I ran across this. It was a pretty old design that she had done. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna assume that they're using the eight inch width to keep everything better measured from not being on the one eighth. So we're just gonna fold this in half. We want it at four inches on each side. Crease that really well. All right, now, got your pencils out. We're going to put our paper in on the short side, which means our five and a half inch across the top. We're gonna to put it in at one inch. And then we're gonna cut, get our cutting blade up here at two and a half inches. So I'm gonna, right here's two and a half. I'm gonna put my blade in at two and a half and I'm gonna drag it to five and a half. And then we're going to slide the paper up to two and a half inches and do the same thing. We're going to put the cut blade in at two and a half and cut down to five and a half. So now we have two cuts in our paper. We're going to turn it on the long edge with this one inch piece up at the top. And we're going to put the um, paper at two and a half inches. Get our cutting blade out of the way. And find my lines. And then we're going to pull our scoring blade down to one inch and score from one inch to two and a half. Feel free to do that a couple of times if you want to make sure you got it. Then we're going to slide this over to five and a half. And then we're going to score it again. We're going to score from the one inch mark to two and a half. And that's pretty much it for all the troubling areas of this. So now we've got these score lines that we just made that we can crease on and fold our card in half. 
So what it's going to actually do is it's going to pop forward. So it's going to pop out like that. Okay. Now what I've got. Oh, I lied. I lied. I lied. I thought this was scrap paper and it sort of is, but it isn't. It's my um, little cheat sheet I made. So what I did was I'm gonna take my crumb cake ink and the wood slat from Rustic Crate. Hopefully I've shown you guys a few samples now that you like this stamp set. And I'm gonna take my crumb cake ink. And I'm gonna fold my card over. And then I've taken a piece of scrap paper and I've cut out this little section right here. And then I'm gonna take my crumb cake and my And I'm going to stamp. And I kind of want this wooden line. You'll see when I stamp the edge of the crate on there, but I don't really care if I, I don't really want that little, I don't know what you want to call it, the little nipple thing that sticks off the side, the little piece of the crate. I don't really want that on there. So I'll do one more. And again, as with masking, I could have went a little closer, uh, moved it over so that it got over closer to the edge. But that's, that's what I'm trying to do right here. So now I'm going to turn my paper over. And I'm going to do it again on the other side. Now this is just how I decided to do it. Because I wanted my little um, pop out to look like a crate. Wood grain. So that's all I did for that. Take my little cheat sheet off. And then now my crate is ready to go. Now you could, but I didn't, get really fancy with this. And somebody should do it and post it just so I could see what it would look like. These rustic crate dies have little hardware pieces. And maybe I will do this in the end. Um, when I have, when I'm done with the video, I will make the little, you know, if, you, if I don't have them even handy enough to grab them, but there's little um, like metal pieces that you would use on a crate to hold it together. And those would look super, super awesome on here. I might just have to go back and do that. Okay. So then I have that done. Then I use the mask. from the unavailable Abundant Beauty Decorative Masks. I did see that they were unavailable right now, but they make the layers, make the uh, sunflowers, there's a hound's tooth and some snowflakes, along with these leaves. So all I'm gonna do is put these leaves on this cardstock with a little blender brush. And my uh, crumb cake. So I'm going to put it, I guess I could put it on all the way, couldn't I? And then I'm just going to, it is going to be over my crate, but I'm going to brush lightly 
I want some lighter, some darker. So I'm just going to brush lightly ar around when I get to the crate so that it doesn't. And with the design, it might not show up anyway. This is all I'm going to do is brush these on for a little bit of subtle in the background because, you know, my creative artistic resident creative director guy, he said needed texture on the this piece. And I agreed it was a little bit boring without having anything on there. Let's see, did I get them all? Oh, that's good. So that's all I'm doing is I'm just going to put these around on here. Let's come up here. And I guess I can do the whole thing again, can I? Where did I end up? So we're going to come up here a little bit. And like I said, I don't care how deep the coloring is. How much they show or don't show it's just i want a little bit of something subtle going on in the background get over here by my crate piece and be careful not to go on it and then how about we go this way up and down and the rest of them, is that going to work? Do I have them up and down? Yeah, they go up and down. I'll put them over to that. And like I say, you want them to go off the paper. It's just a rough. Let's see what that one looks like. That looks pretty good. I'm going to stop right there. Then while I got my crumb cake ink out, I'm going to use my layering leaves stamp set. And I'm just going to pull in the um, thinking of you. I'm put thinking of you on the inside. And crumb cake over here. And then now we're done with the crumb cake. And then this is ready to go on if we want to put it on now. But no, nope. I'm going to say no, it's not ready to go on. I don't want you to put it on yet. If you were making this, can't put it on yet. So now I'm going to take a, got some, Basic white card stock, my memento. And I'm going to use the rustic crate again, and I'm gonna use the pumpkins and sunflowers and the corn. And if Reed's on, I know she's going corn, 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 because that's what we say at my house. And let's see which block. Oh, Deb's on, hi Deb Allen. Christy and mom. I don't know if I missed anybody else. Sorry if I missed you. Um, and so I'm going to do two. Of these. Pumpkin pieces, but I've already done one. So. The card needs two, but I'm going to do one and then I need this. Um, flower, the little flower. So I'm just going to stamp that there. And then we're going to color these. Oh, I was going to show you guys something. Can I take a second and show you something fun? I tried doing this as well. And I didn't like so much how it turned out. But I'm going to show you. When I put this in here. I put it like this, this, so I ended up cutting this flower off, but this is, this is the pumpkin and the corn and the sunflower on this half. 
Well, then I wanted to do it again on this half so that it was, you know, maybe even. I wanted to see how it looked. But, you know, the corn is on the left. And if I cut it off, then I got half of this pumpkin that I got to try and figure out how to cover up. So what I did was I tried to do the reverse image. So a lot of you guys probably know how to do a reverse image, but I'm going to show you just in case you don't. So you need a silicone mat. And I've grabbed my white one that I just got at like probably like Michael's or something. I put it under my um, stamp cut and emboss machine to keep it from moving around. And then I have another one. But I also have the little brownish colored ones that Stampin' Up! has, but you can't see it as well. So I'm going to use this one to show you guys my little example here of what you could do if you wanted to. to do it. So I'm going to ink this up. Oh, I'm doing it that way. It'd be easier. I'm going to ink this up. So have your paper around. Then you're going to stamp on this mat. And I moved it. I'm going to do it again just in case. You're going to stamp on your silicone mat. You're going to make sure that you get all of the ink on there. Pick it up. And then you're going to put your paper over the top. And you're just going to rub it. And now like I didn't try it with my Stampin' Up! mat and today to see if it does anything different. But as you could see, my image is a little bit like dotty, I think, because the silicone mat is wet or it stays wet on there to give you time to do the rubbing on it. But it remained with dots. So possibly if I got my Stampin' Up! mat, which I'm not going to go look for it and tried it that way, it might not be as dotted. But then you can go ahead and color it, which I did, but I wasn't real thrilled with how it looked, if you see on the pumpkin. So then I took a really super fine point pen and started to trace around stuff. And that helped, that made it look better. But when I put it, still put it up against my regular one, it didn't look the same. And I want it, didn't want it to look that much different. So I just came up with another idea. But as you could see, that's how you make the reverse image. And it's, like I say, it's just not as dark or as crisp. But if you've got patience to take a fine, fine black marker and draw over those, you might be in business. So that's just a fun little side note for today. We've got just regular here and I'm gonna color them real quick to I'm gonna knock everything on the floor. All right, so I've just got a variety of blends here. I'll do it fast. So I started with my Daffodil Delight and I colored my, oh, here I go, What I focus and then I stop talking. And you know what guys, I noticed a lot. I probably do, it probably drives you guys nuts. I start. On my videos, stuff I start a sentence and then I get a different thought or I move on to the next step and then I never finish what I was going to say. So I do realize now that I do that and I apologize if it bugs anybody because <laughs> that's just how when I'm talking about it, it's how my brain's functioning. I'm just going from one thing to the next and uh, not finishing the thoughts out. But I'm just going to color these with the Daffodil Delight. Kind of fast. Try and do it fast, but fill it in because, you know, you don't want to do the video too haphazardly because you are making a card and there's a chance that you might have a use for it. The card, that is, you know, so. I need this just one little flower and I was going to do this one ahead of time and I didn't. But I did save you a little bit. I did the other one ahead of time. All right, so now we've got our Daffodil Delight down there. Then I took my Crush Curry and I just came in on all of the dark lines that are coming up the centers of the flowers. And then I'm just going to randomly put a little bit of the color on there because you guys know that I'm not 
the professional color or that I think I am. Or I'd like to think I am. So this is uh one day I'm gonna get me some coloring classes. I already had some coloring classes, and this is how well I still do. I need a refresher course. I told you before, mom and I when Kobix first came out. Mom and I went to a place in Grand Rapids, the big scrapbook place, and did a Copic marker coloring class. It was so fun. Learned a lot, but it's one of those things that if you don't use it a lot, you lose it. And I definitely don't color enough. All right, so we're going to stop with that. Let's just get this little guy a little bit here. I'll do him even faster. All right. Call that good. So I got, oh, I missed one. He sticks out like a sore thumb. All right, so I got that done. Then I have some old olive that I'm just going to go in and do the leaves with. I'm just doing all solid old olive. I wasn't going to get too fancy with other colors because they are small enough leaves. And I am using my um, Stampin' Right markers, not my blend. I thought I'd practice again with these a little bit. And I'm finding if I hold my hand a little tighter and um, more upright and stuff, I have better control. I'm going to do this one leaf over here. We're going to try and save one leaf for this flower. I can press lighter. I don't mash the tip down that way. And uh, I have decent control over how, where it's going. I've got my wild wheat for these leaves. My sample leaves are crumb cake and they were way too dark. This is a little bit better. What color do you guys think that dried up corns stock should be and they didn't really look like they should be yellow because they're not really yellow this time of year they've got a and i'm making like indian corn i just got this is, um, cajun craze I'm just coloring in some of the corn um kernel and i've got some early espresso. I think I tried making these little Indian corns one other time when, when we were videoing. Um, let's do another one over here. We're going to call those good. No, I want a little bit. No, that's good. And then I'm going to fill it back in with daffodil. I'm going to fill in the rest of the corn kernels. I wonder if you could put the mat on the stampers. You know, I was wondering about, I, I stopped and thought about using the stamparatus, but to, if I wanted to stamp it twice, because you'd have to lay, lay the paper down on top of it and then be able to get the paper back in the same spot the second time. And I thought of that before I tried it. I didn't actually try it. And so now I've got my pumpkin pie and I'm just going to color the pumpkin. And this is where I was telling you guys I've been like if I'm just flicking this and my hand, I'm like I said, I'm a, kind of manhandling it. I got it tight. It leaves more of these white spaces but I do have a little bit of control over how heavy it's laying down on there because I'm trying to just sort of flick it. It's not really showing you that I'm doing that, but 
like here, if I go around these pieces, it come the ink is coming out heavier and that I want that. So I don't know if it dries up a little bit in the spot that I am continually flicking around on. Here, if I just kind of try and barely touch it down, you can obviously see that it's not filling it in all the way because my of my feathering or flicking or whatever you want to call it, but it is coming out, you know, lighter. Let's see. Let me do this one a little bit darker. And then we'll come back in this center one. Kind of flick it. It looks like my camera's flicking right along with me. So anyway, I'm taking too much time flicking and trying to show you so that's my thought there anyway i kind of like my newfound coloring skills with my markers so put that a little darker down in there and you can't keep going over it jill or it's going to get too dark down there so we're going to stop oh and i got to do i got crumb cake for the centers i was gonna use early espresso and I did on um, one and it just seemed like it came out too dark it I only went back and forth like scribbled back and forth on that one because it was too dark and that one so I skipped over to the crumb cake for those two I like how dark that is but it totally takes away the um all the little textured dots and such so what we need to do is I just cut all that and we don't even oh, we don't even need to do all that so we got our pumpkins for the first one let me pull in my thing again so I guess this one I really only needed the pumpkins sorry guys so I'm going to cut it out there is a die for it but I'm going to try and cut it I want to be super close to the black without actually cutting into the black. That's my plan anyway. We'll see what we get when we get going through these pointy things that are so tiny. Who knows, I might end up cutting everything off. These scissors are pretty sharp compared to the ones I was using on the sample. Zip right through this. All right, I think, let me check my sample. I think I just got a cut. I think I cut right down at the, I did, I cut right down at the, stop here. I'm going to go over that and then I must have cut these out. I'm going to go ahead and cut them out. All right, so we can save that for another one. I should have paid closer attention to what I had uh, needed pieces and parts for. So we're going to use this one over here. We'll use this one over on this side. So we wanna make sure that we're on either side of this pop out here. And I don't want the pumpkin down inside there too far. So with that, I'm going to cut me two like stands. You guys ever make those card in a box and you need those little pieces to help hold them up? Well, that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to put my kickstand piece on the back. Let 
and then we're going to slide it down in there like so. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on this, pick it up so that I get my pumpkins where I want them. And then I'm going to glue it down to here. And then we've got our corn and our other sunflower that we're going to put on next to it. But what's going to happen is this piece is going to pop out into the card. So we want to make sure that our sunflowers are adhered down. I'll show you. So I'm going to go ahead and glue them on. Just a little smidge there. Make sure that the glue stays on the like on the piece. We don't want it to go behind or it will glue it shut. So we'll give that a second to stick down. And then go ahead and like hold it and shut it. See, because it, it's going to come to our crease. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hold that in there. I'm going to kind of give it a bendy there. And then I'm going to come back. And I'm going to glue just that little tiny bit down. Because we want that to stick down. So when this pops out, it will bend and fold. Can you see that in there? It's gonna bend and then we want that to fold. So let me fold it up, let me stick it down, get the crease done real good and I'll show you. See how it's stuck down on that side? So that'll give it It'll stay there when it's open. It'll stick, keep that flat to the surface when it's open. And then we want to come in with our second set of pumpkins. Oh, I'm going to take my orange marker because I shouldn't have colored on this second one. This should be pumpkin looking. So then we're going to do the same thing and we're going to glue this kickstand thing onto our pumpkin so that we can get it where we need it. Now, the gal who I saw the video, she made this a box. So she had two pieces of paper that she used She had obviously dimensions for it, but I'm just gonna show you. So she had two pieces of paper and she folded it over like this. And then she cut the sides like this. And then she glued them, obviously this is, oh, that was right. She glued them in so that her box had flaps on it. And then that was where I got to thinking that, see, then her box would have two flaps on it, like these. She didn't glue those down. She just glued it to the back. And that's where I thought it'd be cute to put all those little um, metal brackets and stuff on this crate. So stay tuned. I may do that. Oh, look, Jill, what'd you do? So let's stick this in here now, now that my glue has kind of dried. We'll stick that in there. And this one, I kind of want to move over a little bit because we're just going to stick this little sunflower. I'm going to try and cover this hole with that sunflower. So let me cut this sunflower real quick. I promise, quick. Um, 
And if it doesn't cover it, we do have the other sunflower. It's a little bit bigger. You can always revert over to the bigger sunflower to. And the only reason I'm cutting all the pieces and parts off is so that it closes better and that nothing gets in the way of the folds. I think the, hold on, the um, fold is not really going to be, once you get to doing it, the back fold, the main fold that's going to attach to the base of the card, that goes one direction and then this piece goes the other direction, this pop out. So as long as it's popping out, we have a little more, see like we have a little more space. We can go over here as far as we want to because we just need to fold it at this crease and we could do things here. We just have to make sure that each side is freestanding like in, in front of whatever's on the other side so that it doesn't get like in the way. So what I did was strategically tried to place the sunflower. I went with the, like this to cover up my hole and my cut over here where the corn was. And let me put a little bit of glue there. See what we get. I might, um, you guys, I left my glue bottle open all night the other night. Boy, did that take a lot of poking and picking to get that flowing again. Whew. Note to self, check the glue bottle before you go upstairs. Okay, so now I should be good because you see that that's going to, they're going to separate as it closes. And then the little one, he's going to stay in the front. Okay. Okay. So now we have our whole inside built. Gosh, you guys, I want to put those brackets on there. I'm just so excited now. We got our front built. Where'd our card go? What do I do with the card? Let's tuck it over here. All right, so now we're going to open up our card. And then I'm just going to put some glue on each side. So we're going to glue. back and glue the front and we're going to come in here and we're going to place it pretty close to the fold and then we're going to fold the card shut Teresa, love your craft you showed, your jars. Oh gosh, those were cool. Next time, um, can we have you come up here and hold a class? And then there we go. So I probably could have even gotten it closer into the fold. I see a little tiny gap, maybe a little bit of pulling, but it works, it's going. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the front. Isn't that cool? All right, we're moving on to the front. And I'm gonna break off again, show you guys a little something something here. Going rogue. So we're going to have a piece of crumb cake, and then we have three patterns of paper to put on card. So I'm going to show you real quick. Just this is how my brain did it. I had three pieces and this is, I got a number up here. This is my first designer paper. This is my second designer paper. And this is my third pattern. Okay. I'm just going to put them all on top of each other. 
I'm going to bring in my cutter. This one might not be strong enough to go through all three. And then I'm just going to cut. You want to cut them all. So I'm going to come like here. And I think Patty just recently made some of these cards. And so there could be, Patty, is there a specific way you're supposed to be cutting? Is there directions of telling you how to specifically cut these papers? Or no, is it just random? I cut randomly. That's what I'm doing here. Okay, so now I'm going to show you. We're going to put our papers back together, right? Like this. Here's our pieces. These are three and three quarters by five. And then I just did this. I went, you're going to get three cards out of it. One first card has piece one, two, and three. Second card has piece one, two, three. And then the third one has these three pieces. So each of your three layers has three pieces and you just mix and match each to make the piles of each design. So I cut three. And so as you can see, this piece went here. This piece went here for this blue one. And then this piece went down here from the pumpkins. And so then we're just going to glue them onto our card. Teresa, did you cut those um, wise men and stuff out on your Cricut and put them on a plain jar? Is that how you did those? We're going to glue these three pieces on. They were really cool. It was nice to see a photo of you too. I haven't seen you in forever. Oops, and I probably don't have this one in the right spot because I don't have enough. Let's peel it off real quick. If I can, don't close your eyes because I don't think I'm going to get it. Patty, tell us if there was a specific way to put these on yet cut any angles so there's not a pattern to follow okay good all right so i'm gluing those on trying them again let's glue this one next and see if i have any better look want to leave like the same kind of space between everything now let's glue this back on see if i can get it back in the right spot If Teresa's still on, maybe she's going to have to do a Zoom with us. And we can put them together on a Zoom. Jill, focus on what you're doing here, not what Teresa's doing. All right. So now I got them on there. So now I just left a little bit of space because they were three and three quarters by five. So it allowed me to leave that border on there. Then you're just going to glue this on the front. And it makes it even better when there's not any specific way to cut those papers. However you feel like laying them in your cutter. Okay, so then we're going to lay this piece on the front and glue that on. And had I been thinking, no, I couldn't. I was going to say I would have twisted that so that the pumpkins were at the top, but then my trees would have been upside down. So we got upside down pumpkins, but we're looking at them from the top. So that's good. Then I'm going to get my words from the layering leaves. I'm going to use um, sending hugs on this one. I 
those on there. And I've got my pretty peacock. Just gonna stamp that on very vanilla. And then I fussy cut that out. You could layer it by all means. If that's what you wanna do, you can layer it on Pretty Peacock or another color of paper. That works fine too. You guys know I'm not normally a fussy cutter. around here around. hold on I gotta cut this off I need to work with the smaller pieces and then you just follow the contour of the like the number or the letters the words just follow along, add some extra little hoop de doos in there. If you want to, if you saw like under hugs, I added a bunch of swoopy looking motions just because, like right here, just because the stuff flows. You don't, you could just go straight across, but I wanted it to have a little bit of life to it. So then I put that right up in the center. And you know, that copper ribbon that I've been using would look really great on this. But I also have almost a full roll of copper clay that I thought I wanted to use up some. And I'm thinking, I don't know, does just one strip of ribbon look all right? Or should I try and do a couple? I think that looks kind of bare to just have one, but if I do three, it might be a little overpowering for the, uh, like one or three. There's three haphazardly held down in my clutches or one. One looks kind of boring now that I got three on there. All right, I'm going with three. We're doing three. Christy says three. I'm doing three. So what I'm going to do is put I'm gonna put some this probably isn't even enough. But I'm gonna try and put that there to Hold it in place. Is that enough? Okay, that's what we're going to do. And then I'm going to put a couple on the end, a couple little snippets on the ends of my Sending hugs. So that it all stays down. And let's see, I do have a little tiny bit of this tear tape here that I'm gonna put on just so that this part sticks to the ribbon. Hi, Kathy. Got the whole gang here. Kathy, Teresa's on. And then I will put this up to cover up the couple pieces of dimensional that I could see through there. And I think I'm going to cut this just a little bit off. Looks a little bit long. Not too runaway crazy. All right. And that is it. I like this one. This one's going to get changed. And I'm going to put the bling on there. Now I got a lot going on. I might not stop and put the bling on right now, but 
maybe tomorrow. Or maybe I'll do it tonight so that I don't have to do it tomorrow. But there you go, guys. There's our card for today. Put your Jill Blanchette on the back. And you're ready to go. Or I should say put your Stampin' Up on the back, right? You don't, that's all they care about is that it says Stampin' Up on their copyright. They don't care if your name's on there or not. So let's come back up here. And that's it. I appreciate you watching, everybody. I'll be back hopefully again next week. I've got the um, girls weekend this weekend, heading up north to spend some time in Ludington with some friends. Lots and lots of good times ahead. We'll be watching some on stage action while we're there. So um, stay tuned for the B, what is it? Be my Valentine, be mine. Um, the new B stuff that we can get come January, we get to play with it on Saturday. So I'm excited for that. Um, other than that, you guys stay warm, stay dry, and I'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.